Hello everybody. So in this video, this is a continuation of Xamarin Apple Pay. But the problem is that Xamarin Apple Pay is not working. The documentation for Xamarin uh, Apple Pay is outdated. So what we're going to do is instead of following this, which is really not working <laughs> we are going to do the following we're going to do we're going the web route because I always have a good experience when I go the web route so and there's a lot more developers doing it this way so let's give it a shot Apple Pay on the web. Support Apple Pay on your website with JavaScript-based APIs. Safari supports two JavaScript APIs that let you accept Apple Pay payments from customers on your websites. Payment Request API, a W3C candidate API. Apple Pay JS API, analogous to the Pass Kit, Apple Pay and Wallet framework from Apple Pay in apps. You can try out Apple Pay transactions on the demo page. See Apple Pay on the web interactive demo. That sounds very enticing. I would really want to try that out. Apple Pay is available on all iOS devices with a secure element, an industry standard certificate chip designed to store payment information safely. In macOS, users must have an Apple Pay capable iPhone or Apple Watch to authorize the payment or Mac with Touch ID. Okay, so even if this thing runs on the web, it will require the person to have a Apple device, like always Apple. Okay, Apple Pay availability by region and platform. Apple Pay is available in supported regions. It is available in Apple Pay iOS 10 and later, iOS worldwide except China iOS 10 and later, which is most of the US probably has iOS 10 or later. In iOS, Safari, Safari View Controller, whatever, object support, Apple Pay. See checking for Apple Pay availability. To ensure your implementation only displays the Apple Pay button on supported devices. Regulations. In some regions, may require specific configuration in your implementation. For more information, see complying with regional regulations. Apple Pay requirements. The requirements for using Apple Pay on your website. Your website must comply with Apple Pay guidelines. For more information, see acceptable use guidelines for Apple Pay on the web. You must have an Apple developer account and complete the registration. For more information, see configuring your environment. All pages that include Apple Pay must be served over HTTPS. That makes sense. For more information, see setting up your server. Uh, basically, your website has to be using good encryption. It can't be some old stuff that nobody's using anymore. Uh, for design guidance, see human interface guidelines. Okay, uh, that's a big word. <laughs> uh, okay, so Apple Pay setup, setting up your server, configuring your environment, maintaining your environment, Apple Pay buttons, displaying Apple Pay buttons using JavaScript, Apple Pay button, displaying Apple Pay buttons using CSS, Apple Pay JavaScript APIs, choosing an API for implementing Apple Pay on your website. Okay team, so basically as we can see here, there is a nice outline of information that can help us guide us, like a step-by-step -step guide. Honestly, I do prefer Google Pay because the guide, which I'm gonna make a video soon, is 10 times more explicit step-by-step -step guide, which is exactly what us developers need. And it's obviously web friendly. It's not just for Android devices. So we could just embed it in a web view and run it on Apple, run it on web, run it on Android, and we're good to go. 
and obviously the, a lot of native stuff is just native and we can't get away with that uh so that's why i'm transitioning to web like web native kind of stuff like blazer.net maui which is trending and people are loving it it's a mix of web and mobile and it runs native so okay guys so let's just get started if we click over here apple pay on the web interactive demo we get this page that is extremely blinding and annoying uh honestly i don't understand why uh would it kill them to give like a uh, option for dark mode <laughs> let me just help everyone out one sec guys okay team so now i activated dark mode it is not a feature of apple uh apparently they don't believe in dark mode for some reason on their website um so i just downloaded a plugin and created my own dark mode so you guys don't need to hurt your eyes because honestly it hurts like looking into a light bulb you gotta be a psychopath to do that and sorry if somebody is uh no hard feelings okay apple pay on the web interactive demo try an apple pay test transaction using the button below transactions made on this site do not charge your card overview use this page to learn how to enable apple pay on your web using apple pay js on the payment request api this demo pre-configures the apple pay button below with default values explore further by modifying values in the code blocks throughout the page to customize payment sheets experiences this demo displays a transcript of server responses after each transaction for a context click or tap the show transcript tab to view the transcript transaction okay so this thing basically is interactive and it shows us uh the results from the api i don't see exactly where that interactive part is um so let's give it a shot let's figure out what all this code is um it's not the friendliest thing honestly guys if you guys look at apple i mean google side it is super intuitive like super friendly don't understand why do we have this um probably it's for like non-coding friendly people or something like that um okay let's see let's give this a shot Okay guys, as well as letting you try out the Apple Pay JavaScript APIs, this demo can also serve as a tutorial for your implementation. It assumes you have already set up your environment to process Apple Pay transactions and are familiar with Apple Pay best practices. Before starting your integration, we recommend reviewing getting started with Apple Pay and the Apple Pay on the web human interface guidelines. For more information about supporting Apple Pay on your website, see Apple Pay on the web. Okay, so we gotta shoot through all those hoops. We gotta jump through all those hoops to get to this thing. Uh, this bunch of code boxes and stuff. Um, so let's give that a shot. getting started with apple pay okay this is how we get started with apple pay let's see what's up provide a fast easy and secure way for users to buy goods and services in your app on your website developers that implement apple pay using best practices have substantially increased checkout conversions rates customer loyalty and purchase frequency and reduced checkout time that's great um i think most people that we're going to install this already knew that um presenting the option to buy with apple pay apple pay is compatible with most active apple devices which is great okay we recommend adding apple pay to product detail pages the cart checkout page in payment settings or anywhere else a user can choose a payment method or initiate a purchase 
Apple Pay APIs provide several types of buttons so you can use in your app or website. Each button displays an Apple approved caption, font color, style, and maintains ideals, ideal proportions when scaled for various interface layouts. You can configure the button's corner radius to match the style of your UI and support for localization and accessibility are built in. That's cool. Um, localization, that might be useful for when you're in different countries and you can change the string, what is it, what's displayed. Uh, I thought that would, that is a good feature. That's a great feature. Okay, presenting the payment. When a user chooses Apple Pay as the payment method, a payment request is created. The payment sheet must be presented immediately after the user taps the Apple Pay button without any interim screens or pop-ups except to prompt for necessary product details, such as size or quantity. The payment sheet can include the user's name, billing address, shipping address, shipping method, phone number, and email address. When deciding what information to display, remember to show only what's necessary to process and service the transaction. You can configure line items to add relevant information such as shipping costs, taxes, and discount. For details, see Human Interface Guidelines and the Apple Pay on the web demo. Okay, so obviously on mobile, this is going to be straightforward. Um, on the web, it's going to be a little bit weird because we have a lot more screen real estate. Um, hopefully, there's a little bit of bootstrap on the back end of this so we don't have to weird ourselves out too much adapting to different screen sizes and that kind of stuff. It is already done for us in the bootstrap library. Um, Apple Pay is a lot different from Google Pay because Google Pay lets you do all of this payment information on your website. So you don't really need to do it two times uh, when you're going to pay, which really kind of defeats the purpose. Because if you already have it available on your website, why do it again on the, uh, on the payment button? But I guess everyone has a reason for doing things differently. Uh, it is convenient to have that information there because uh, people can see what they're buying. They can understand more clearly what they're getting for their money, which can be an advantage, which you might not be able to see that easily with Google Pay. So I guess it's all a trade-off. It's all pros and cons. Obviously, if you're here, you just want to have both. You want to have Apple Pay, you want to have Google Pay because, I mean, you want your business to grow. You don't want to stagnate. Okay, processing the payment token. Once the user has authenticated to confirm purchase intent, you don't need to handle their actual credit or debit card numbers. Instead, your app or website receives a payment object containing an encrypted payment token. This token encapsulates the information needed to complete a payment transaction including the device, specific account number, the amount, and a unique one-time use cryptogram. The token can be decrypted by the merchant with the certificate pro with the one sec. <laughs> the token can be decrypted by the merchant with the certificate private key or by the payment service provider PSP on behalf of the merchant. Once decrypted, the token needs to be passed to the payment service provider for processing. Okay, guys. So basically, in this part, it gets a little bit complicated. Okay, let's do a short recap of this. Once the user has authenticated to confirm purchase intent, you don't need to handle their actual credit or debit card numbers. Instead, your app or website receives a payment object containing an encrypted payment token. This is the same as with Google. This token encapsulates the information needed to complete a payment transaction, including the device specific account number, the amount and unique one-time use cryptogram. So this token is passed to the payment service provider on behalf of the merchant. 
and they can decrypt it to actually process the payment. The token can be decrypted by the merchant with the certificate private key or by the payment service provider on behalf of the merchant. And I guess when they say merchant, that's us. Once decrypted, the token needs to be passed to the payment service provider for processing. Okay, so I like this diagram here. Uh, Google's not doing this. This is a lot better. Um, customer. Transaction includes unencrypted billing and shipping contacts and encrypted payment tokens. Okay, uh, that's a lot to to hold right there. Uh, the crypt payment token, this can also be done by a payment service provider. So the merchant is the person, the company, the organization that's going to process the payment for us. We're not going to be able to process the payment because payment processing has involved a bunch of secret APIs that the banks use to create money, to send money, and etc. Uh, that are very high security, and that's only a handful of companies can do this. So it's not like you can process payments on your website uh, without access to one of these companies that give you uh, security, extra security layer, so you can't like falsify something or anything like that. So it makes it a little bit more secure. Payment service provider uses token to run an e-com credit debit card authorization which includes, which includes a one-time cryptogram. So the cryptogram, I'm a little bit confused with that part. If you guys understand what is a cryptogram, I'd love to hear that. Um, but on Google's side, the cryptogram is like a type of encrypted debit card. Uh, it's like a tokenized debit card that's converted into like a crypto debit card. So instead of you using your regular card numbers, you're using like a encrypted version uh, that protects you a little bit more. Validate tokens, translate it into the debit credit account and submits to users for confirmation. Yeah, this part over here is where we can't have access. We can only have access to speaking to a merchant that is the one who actually has the ability to connect to this network here. Receives payment request and can either approve or decline. And the bank, which is extra protected from being accessed to their API, because their API is like, like I said, very powerful and very secure. Okay, make the most of Apple Pay. Apple Pay lets you accelerate checkout and create great new customer experiences. Follow these best practices, increase the checkout conversion rates, customer loyalty and purchase frequency. Choose the most relevant button type. Make sure that the call to action in the button is aligned with the action the user needs to take. The system provides several Apple Pay button types and styles you can use in your app your website and the human interface guidelines provided options for further customization display the Apple pay button prominently and above the fold yep like that implement express checkout offer express checkouts by displaying the Apple pay button on the product or card page users can select sh shipping options and addresses directly in the payment sheet and checkout without any typing which leads to decreased card abandonment and increased overall conversion rates. Okay, so we have the option to do express checkout. And this is a little bit complicated because again, it has its advantages. It gives you a card and you can add or remove things so you know exactly what you're gonna get when you pay. Uh, a lot different from Google Pay because from Google Pay, they give you a lot of freedom to just do this on your website, your app, and you're not inside the uh, Apple Pay um, UI. Simplify payment method selection. Leverage PassKit APIs for apps and JavaScript-based APIs and Safari for websites to identify users with a card in a wallet and pre-select Apple Pay as the payment method to accelerate checkout. So yeah, they already have the card information, so it's a lot easier to check out with them. 
The sad part is like they're not taking into consideration developers. Like it's like it's great for clients. It's great for companies. It's not so great for the people who are building it. Let's see. Let's test that assumption. Let's see if if it's not that great. I hope it's not a bad experience building this thing. Okay. Offer the ability to register only after purchase. Requiring users to register for an account before purchase is a leading cause of checkout. Abandonment. Apple Pay allows users to easily check out as a guest. After the purchase is complete, you can provide the option to set up an account with their Apple ID using sign in with Apple. Which is really cool. I love this. This is really awesome. This is how it's supposed to be. Offer a new commerce experience with app clips and apple pay so app clips provide streamlined in the moment experience that helps users perform specific tasks without downloading a full app by combining apple pay with app clips you can enable ex exciting new omnichannel commerce experience that delight you delight customers while increasing sales and conversion app clips enable experiences like chip to home pay it at the table ride self-checkout donate Supporting Apple Pay, countries and regions. So obviously it's available in the US. Uh, Apple Pay is available in consumers to use in many countries and regions. Merchants in any country or region can accept payments with Apple Pay as long as their payment service provider supports Apple Pay in China mainland and Apple Pay on the web is supported on Safari. Apple Pay on the web is supported in Safari and iOS only. What? Okay, on the web is supported in Safari on iOS only. Okay, so if users are using Apple Pay on the web, it's only going to be available on Safari. So that's like a big, big, big uh, issue because that's excluding a big part of the market right there, sadly. Um, thankfully, we hope people are using Safari because there's a lot of people that are really not using it because Google Chrome is a lot friendlier uh, and efficient and it doesn't, it works a lot better, it has great features. So I hope they, they learn from that and they um, make it better. Cards and banks. Users need to add a card in Apple Wallet to pay with Apple Pay. Apple Pay supports many of the major credit debit and prepaid cards from top banks and card issuers around the world. E-commerce platforms and payment service providers. The most popular e-commerce, obviously Google doesn't do this. In Google, you can always check out on any browser. It doesn't have to be on Chrome. It can be on whatever you want it to be. Um, E-commerce platforms and payment service providers. The most popular e-commerce platforms and payment service providers support Apple Pay in apps and on the web. Using an Apple Pay SDK or JavaScript API from a payment provider is the quickest and most reliable way to support Apple Pay in your app or on your website. So yeah, that's the way we're going to go because it's the easiest, it's the fastest, and that's what we want to do. Okay, so we got transaction types. Um, there's different types of transactions and there's also guides and stuff. Let's do a quick recap of the different types of transactions that are. Okay, so Apple Pay supports most e-commerce transaction types and offers the flexibility to accommodate simple to complex business models. Your payment service provider can help you to find the best Apple Pay implementation method to support your business model. Below are examples of transaction types supported by Apple Pay. Ask your payment service provider which transaction types they support. So these are the transaction types that Apple supports. They do authorization and capture, authorization and delayed capture, which means what exactly? Reserve funds on a customer's account and transfer money to your bank. Reserve funds on... So that's authorization and capture it's just capture the money and the late capture is that you get the money later yeah, authorization and capture with different amount 
reserves funds on a customer's account and transfer money to your account once an order is successfully completed for an amount higher or lower than authorized okay that's kind of weird so that's good for taxis and scooters okay cool partial shipment divide a purchase into multiple payments for goods that are not shipped together fixed subscription handle repeating payments at a regular frequency and with a fixed amount flexible frequency subscription handle payments for services where frequency is inconsistent for the user has a choice to vary frequency meal subscriptions where users can skip the deliveries reschedule delivery dates and change frequency of deliveries okay cool flexible amount subscriptions handle payments for services where prices vary based on consumption utility bills subscriptions with a promotion on the first month so we got managed subscription handle payments for services where the user can vary frequently the amount of services received cancel transactions card verification verify that the selected card is associated with the cardholder account and that is valid and in good standing so we got the human interface guide app store review guidelines apple pay on the web acceptable user guidelines apple developer program license agreement pass kit apple pay apple pay on the web this is where we want to go um let's learn more about this thing Apple Pay Web Merchant Registration API. Manage merchant registration through your web platform. The Apple Pay Web Merchant Registration API is a, is a REST API that enables platform integration such as payment service providers and e-commerce platforms to register web merchants who want to offer Apple Pay on the web. As a platform integrator, you manage Apple Pay configuration on the merchant's behalf when you call register merchant. Merchants aren't required to set up an Apple developer account or configure their own keys and certificates. You set up a shared set of keys and certificates for your entire merchant portfolio. Register merchants with their own website domains or with web pages hosted by your platform. Uh, this is very confusing because who is the merchant? Are you talking about the who exactly because it's a little bit uh, hard to understand um, because there's there's could be many people that can be the merchant it would be good to like narrow that definition down so people can understand what they're reading um, API requirements for use to use Apple pay web merchant registration API you must meet the following requirements your organization must be enrolled in the Apple developer program you must apply for access to the API for more information about applying. Your server must call the API using mutual authentication with transport layer security. Okay, okay. Registering with Apple Pay and applying to use the API. Registering a e-commerce partner with Apple Pay and applying to use for the web service. Okay. So let's start with this thing. This looks like what we need to do. This is the guideline. Okay, cool. Registering with Apple Pay and applying to use the API. Register a commerce partner with Apple Pay and apply to use the web service. Huh. Okay, guys. So this article is a little bit more verbose, but it does have some hidden gems that are useful. For example, an e-commerce platform that's enrolled in the Apple Developer Program as an organization can apply to use the Apple Pay Web Merchant Registration API by completing the following steps. Create your unique Apple Pay Merchant ID. <laughs> okay guys, so if you haven't done this, I would recommend you do it. Go to your Apple Developer account and create a Merchant ID. Sign in the Apple developer and fill out the submission form to request access to the API. I'm going to give that one a shot. Set up your payment processing certificate and merchant identity certificate. Remember guys, you're going to have to put in your banking information and your uh, tax information. It's different per country. That is not going to be easy. Apple takes forever. 
to review your information, it might take a, f a few business days. It is not immediately, sadly. So bear that in mind. Okay guys, so in short, Xamarin Apple Pay documentation is outdated, but you're better off using Apple Pay JS API and doing a web embedding. However, I found some links that do work on the description. It's a weird fluke that you need to press the magnifying glass on the right and select merchant IDs, then you can continue following the instructions. Also, Apple Pay is only available on Safari and iOS devices, so it's kind of a big deal because it leaves out a massive amount of Apple users that don't use Safari. But at least you can capture them in the app if they download it. So I hope this video was useful. And if you have any questions, if anyone's watching this video, please share, like, and subscribe. Um, hopefully, this video is going to be made more useful. And uh, I don't have a lot of budget to make them better, but I'm getting there. We're getting there. We're making them better. So we can understand the documentation a lot better because there's a lot of documentation out there that's just dead ends everywhere. And uh, we want to, I want to make uh, on this channel, I want to help people help guide people with the documentation and uh, help them know if it works or if it doesn't work. So hopefully this video was of use and uh, links are in the description. If anyone wants them, just comment. If there's anything you need, take care guys.